by saying thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Greetings. Lord, may I be a vessel. Use me in Jesus' name. Tonight, I want to talk to you about you. I got a question. Are you doing you or are you doing yourself in? Do you see you, the God in you, or the child in you? Can you face you, meaning can you stand against the selfish decisions that keep you from progress, success, or doing better than your best? I like to read from John 10, um, 1 through 11, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, but uh, whatever version you have is fine. John 10. Starting at verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Make a note of that, thief and a robber. But he who enters the, by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Remember, hear his voice. Tell me where you're reading again from, I'm sorry. John 10. John 10. All right. All right. I start over at verse one. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Keep mind of that thief and a robber. But he who enters the door, enters by the door, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. Make a note of that. Hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Do you allow God to lead you? Yet they will no, by no means follow a stranger, but flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Once again, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. I'm going to pause right there. Does anybody know what the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Mm, that's people, our life. Life. Because if he came to give you life in abundance, then right there in the same scripture verse, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. What is the gift that we are all given? Life. But you have to choose to live. Because if you don't choose life on purpose, the thieves of the world will steal it from you. In here we have princes, princesses, kings, and queens, depending on whether you lead in the household or not. And I say, listen to this word, principality. Principality. Every principality means there is a prince of some doctrine or some thought, whether holy or not, that's pulling you in one direction or not. One direction or another. And we have to, that's why we have to on purpose choose life to pull us to live. Which mean, okay. Go ahead. Okay, I just really think you still kill and destroy. That's mm -hmm. still somewhere like up in my brain. So still kill and destroy. You said that's what the devil come to do. Still kill destroy is that your life? Just, I know our life. Breaking down, stealing, killing, and destroy is that pretty much almost the same thing to steal, to destroy? What steal, kill, destroy is that pretty much almost the same thing as one? Well, let's look at it. If I'm stealing from you, right? I'm taking something that you have. What do you have that I can steal? I can steal your joy by making you focus on things that you complain about. Okay. I can destroy your finances because you made a choice 
on how you spend your money or who you let govern your, your spending. What principles are you allowing to govern your finances? I can kill the life God gave you by certain health practices that we or lifestyles that we lead. I mean, let's think about it. If 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 we live in high promiscuous lifestyles, we're, we're killing our life, whether spiritually, mentally, or physically. Because soul ties do exist. And every time two lay down, they become one. <laughs> so what what are, what are we really doing? So they're 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 similar, but not quite the same. And the, the the distinction is, what do you have that you're allowing somebody to take? That's that's giving you life. What do you have that can be killed, which is your life? What do you have that can be destroyed? That still is your life. Right. So it's all centered around about your life. It's just how right. I take from it. How I hinder it. How I stop it. How I destroy it. So it's the how. It's all centered around your life. Mm -hmm. It's just the how. You know, I just thought about, as you was explaining that, about the scripture where it said the wages of sin is um, death. death. And the wages of um, Christ is, is eternal life. Right. So it's like, the, you, we don't, a lot of times, me, when I explained it, and you can kind of help me out, teacher. The way I explained it, so you don't necessarily die physical, physically. You basically die um, spiritually. It's a spiritual death. Separated from God is death. Right. Amen. Anything that separates you from the Father is there. Going back to the Garden of Eden. Um, when when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit in Genesis 3. You know, and then, you know, the Lord had to lay out punishment or judgment. You know, and it's like, hey, well, hey, you, you've done this by being disobedient. You know, and that's, that's leading right back into, you know, where we at. Because... The good um, Jesus has come that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly, yeah. which goes straight to John 4 where he met the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will give you uh, water that will spring up out of you. And, and that's that in you. And that's why I say, are you choosing you, the God in you or the childish version of you? Because because God is speaking to all of us, even in my unsaved state. I didn't know it was him. He was still speaking to me. You know, and it's just, what are we allowing? Are we allowing our higher self to talk, to lead us? You know, and it goes back to earlier in verse, um, you know, he said he leads them in and out. Uh, in verse, um, verse 3, yeah, John 10, verse 3. You know, to him the doorkeeper opens the sheep. And the, to, to, to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls... His own sheep by name and leads them out. He's speaking to them, you know, and leading them. And, and we have to choose when we hear that voice to discern that, yes, it is his voice. And yes, I am going to follow. Yes. And that's why, you know, we have to be careful of what principles we are hearing or seeding, planting in our in our spirit, in our minds that will govern us. I recognize I had to stop listening to certain type of rap music. Let me not just say that. Certain type of heavy metal music, certain type of blues music. Because blues will give you exactly what it said. The blues. <laughs> the beat may sound good. It has rhythm. But when I'm talking about the blues, I probably going to feel blue. My baby left me. <laughs> you know? I ain't got no house. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Even uh, Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze was my favorite song, you know, uh, listening through my dad's, you know, stuff as a kid. And, and But then when I got older, I started listening to the, you know, the beat was banging, you know, like, yeah, I'm getting energized and all this stuff. And then I started listening to what was ministering to me. You know, he's talking about strife with a woman, yeah. you know, and I'm just like, I don't want that, you know. And I recognize my spirit, you know, and, and, and some of the things I would go through. Just because I'm entertaining certain thoughts in my head or, or, or I'm speaking this stuff. And see, that's how the enemy steals because I, 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 I slip something in your mouth. 
and I let you speak over yourself through these songs. I mean, think about how many songs we've sung that are not fruitful, That's right. that are not productive for our lives. You know, I mean, and I look at in church when, you know, when we sing praise and worship songs, they, 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 they are uplifting because we are speaking, we are singing God's word over ourselves. And then, you know, as you sing, you certain songs just get stuck in your head. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, good or bad. But when a, when, when, when a good song gets stuck in your head, you know, it's a go to. Yeah. You know, I remember even in my teens when I was allowing the devil to steal my mouth so much. And the amount of profanity that would come out, you know, through listening to certain music, the amount of times I would just wish, you know, you hear a song about, you know, some somebody dissing somebody on, you know, on a, in a relationship or something. I'm like, oh, man, I can't. That, that, that'd be the first thing come out of my mouth when something going wrong in a relationship, you know. And I say, you know what? Let, let me get this out because this is not kingdom minded. And and that's what's being stolen and destroyed. Our kingdom mind. And that's why we have to renew our mind repeatedly to get the kingdom mind so that we can live on kingdom principles and stand on a solid foundation which will withstand the storms because whether saved or not, you're going to go through the storm. It's just how you're going to make it on the other side. Is your life destroyed? Is something stolen? <laughs> have you been killed physically, mentally, spiritually? Go ahead, Pastor. Amen. You just said so mighty powerful there, and I'm not trying to uh, 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 derail your train of thought. Keep going. But you were talking about the, uh, you know, scripture says that's life and death and the power of talk. Amen. And uh, a lot of times we're just saying, you know, what well, we're speaking it. But not only are you speaking it, sometimes you're singing it. Sometimes you're just, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's still words, you know what I'm saying? Whether you got it, make it sound good, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like I said, we have to be careful. Because, like I said, uh, the Bible talk talking about how it's not what uh, enters a man that defiles a man, but what comes out. Right. So, like I said, we have to be power, uh, careful with our tongues and the things that we say and the things we speak over our life, over our children, over our finance, you know, just the small little stuff, you know. And the enemy loves to try to trap our words. Like, uh oh, he, he said, uh uh, he said it, uh, I'm broke. So, I, you know, he got the money, so I got, we got to make sure he broke up. He just said that he was broke, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, man, I don't know if I can make it. He already said he didn't know he could whether he could make it, so he left that in the air. So, it, it, you know, instead of saying, you know, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me, you know, I, I am, a, you know, a blessed coming in and blessed coming out. Amen. And, and I am healed. I am delivered in right. such and such. So uh, that just made me think about that. So, like I said, uh, uh, devil Jesus come that we may have life and like I said we got to be careful he done gave us life so let's not take that life away by speaking uh, negative or, or death to our situations. Amen. And I would like to agree and add on to what Pastor Cole said um, that is very true like like you said the music wise like I think like Music nowadays, like so many people, like supposedly can relate to like certain songs, whether they sad or happy or or bad or whatever. So like they be singing it with uh, all their heart and stuff, and don't be knowing like that they speaking this like on their lives and stuff like that, and they wonder why. Like they listen to some like sappy music all the time, or like really depressed music. That's how they gonna start feeling, and you start to see it like in person. Like man, I'm so sad all the time. I'm, like. What kind of music? Like, if you look at their playlist, all they have is, you know, sad and depressed music. And that's so true. Like, you never, like, notice that. That just came up to my mind. And, and it goes back to what was say, what was Lucifer before he fell from heaven? Was he, like, the... One of the, one of the chief musicians. He was, uh, you know, praise and worship in heaven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that, you have to look, look at the spirit of the song. You know, what's the spirit behind the song? What energy created this? It's like an art piece. You know, what what energy was put in here that that you gonna that, that, that you're gonna receive from it? I mean, it and, and it's a recording and it's going over the airways and he you know, he's the prince of the air. You know, so what's going over the airways? You know, and and he he tries to get in as much as he can, you know, through through certain songs and certain artists. You know, certain artists can have, you know, maybe Seven great songs, you know, and then he had them three that are whatever that he's trying to sneak that, you know, in. And some artists may come out. I mean, think of we have several artists who started, you know, um, through through uh, praise and worship. You know, Whitney Houston and 
and uh, even uh, Beyonce, Destiny's Child, and a lot of different other artists, you know, started, you know, through the church and, you know, uh, changed, you know, and started singing more worldly music and, and had different influences. And I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> um, just to close out with John 10, um, that last verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. A sheep follows the shepherd. And as we hear his voice, as we hear his principles, we have to discern this is God. And when we have these thoughts come in our head, sometimes we just not that smart. We have to just accept it. We just not that smart. And especially, you know, you hear from God when it's, it's something that's going to require faith. You may not want to do it. You know, it's something that you wouldn't think to do. And it, 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 um, it's going to follow scripture. And those are four, four principles that you can use to help you discern whether it's God or not. And allowing the shepherd to give his life for you. Because see, Jesus died for us and was resurrected so that we, through him, can be dead in our worldly ways, our unproductive ways, and live in him as he is the example and use his principles to guide us, use his principles to pull us. And with, with that, um, we have to recognize some of these hirelings out here. And I'm even leading verse 12. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. And I, when I read that, I said, think about some of these artists out here. And, you know, well, we just on the theme of music, but just it, it's applicable. Some of these artists are out here just for the dollar. Some of them are studio gangsters. They're singing it and selling it because that's all they want to do is make a dollar for it. And I recognize, you know, that I don't want to buy their lie. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I even look at the word television. Well, tell a vision. Whose vision is being told? Mm. You know, what am I seeing? You know, because we got different gates, as Pastor uh, Koval was mentioning. Um, we got a mouth gate. We got an ear gate. We got an eye gate. You know, that's how we receive and give information or, or, or communication. You know, I mean, even with our eyes, sometimes we communicate nonverbal stuff. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> right, you know. <laughs> so, you know, these hirelings, they didn't die for us. You know, I mean... I've, you know, worked on different entertainers' homes. I could care less who they were. You just a chick. You still, a, you know, one of God's creations. You know, I, I care about you with the little price, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to celebrate you just because you are a celebrity. You know, I, I celebrate Jesus. I worship Jesus. I worship God. You know, I, I'm not going I'm, I'm to be, a, I, mean, I mean, like you Outcast is one of my favorite artists, mm -hmm. but I've seen him in the airport before, and I didn't want an autograph. I saw him with his son, and I was just like, you know what? Let me give him the respect. The Lord was like, give him the respect of being a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, let he's with his child. He's he's he doesn't want that discomfort right. of, you know. And I mean, even when I work at you know certain folks' house, it's like, yeah, I know you're a millionaire, but you you hire me because you can trust that. I'm not trying to take your stuff. Mm -hmm. Only thing I want is to check at the end of the job. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. You just made me um, think about, we saw Tiny at the movie theater. She was with her kids. You know, she was just trying to enjoy a movie with her kids. And, you know, I just said, you do such great work. And I just gave her a hug. And I just moved on about my business. But people were standing behind her, literally recording her, wow. taking pictures and stuff. I was like, she can't even have a decent... You know, she's just a person just like we are. And she can't even have a decent moment with her kids without, you know, we think we want all that fame and stuff. But do we really want that? Right. The cost. We want the money, but hey, we want the Right, right, right. The cost of fame. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just just things that, you know, we may not, you know, we may not always um, count, you know, uh, in terms of the repercussions, you know, of some roles we choose. Um, but, but God, <laughs> yes. 
But God always finds a way to give you grace to help you with, in whatever space or place you are, and He'll meet you where you are. And and that just goes back to saying, are you really doing the higher self in you, or are you doing yourself in? Because a lot of these folks have done themselves in with trying to live the life. I mean, think of how many artists have been incarcerated. <laughs> you know, I mean, due to the fame, I mean, even, let's just go from artists, uh, sports, you know, people, whether boxers or uh, football players, basketball players, you know, for, for various things. And, you know, I just look at, at some point, you know, we have to allow God to lead us. Yeah. As, especially in, in in major decisions like relationships, mm -hmm. you know, or jobs. Like, because when you go to work, you're going to have relationships with these people. Mm -hmm. It may not be very intimate, but it's going to be on some level mm -hmm. of relationship. You know, and, and you're going to have to choose your comfortability with, you know, around these people. You know, everybody in here is attractive. And you have to think about, you know, do I have to deal with sexual harassment, male or female? Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. and take that any way you want to mm -hmm. take it today, you know, because of the times that we're in. You, you know, know um, you just made us think, you know, we started doing more evangelizing going to the neighborhood, that's how we got all these kids out on through the neighborhood, you know, getting kids. We got our logo and stuff on the van, so they were seeing the van and coming out to the van. But I said that to say Sunday, oh my gosh, brother mine. We picked up this woman from when we first gave out the flight. She said, I'm Jehovah's Witness, but if y'all give me one of those t-shirts, I'm coming to y'all church and stuff. I'm coming, y'all got some free food? Amen. Oh, we coming, we coming, coming. <laughs> She came in here, She and she said in Sunday school, we get food after Sunday school. She said, she, I thought y'all was giving free food. I said, well, after Sunday school, we're giving free food. So we had Sunday school, and then we went on ahead and gave free food. She changed to some little bit old short, no, some jeans and a halter top after Sunday school. She stayed in there the whole time eating. When Pastor came, she could not come back in here. She stayed out there the whole time. I'm just her witness. I'm just here. I just brought those kids here. Then before you know it, she went from that to not coming in here to wanting us to take her somewhere else to cussing us out on the church ground, kept going back and forth. I mean, it was awful. Then she knocked, give me those children. I said, no, she lived in the neighborhood with these kids, but I got these kids from their mother. Right. She was cussing. She was talking about stealing the church van. I could have stole the van. She said, I could have hit that lady in the, in the back of the head and stole the van. I mean, it was just Awful. She banged on that window right there while we were having service. Wow. Wow. And the enemy is busy trying to steal, kill, and destroy the well, life. I can't believe it on the church grounds, right? Well, people, they don't have limits. They don't, I mean, obviously, when you got, see, that's the principle that was leading her, going right back to the sermon. The principle that she was leading was the spirit of manipulation. I'm going to do everything to try and disturb your whatever to get my way that's, right. that's manipulation I to, I'm a, she had already been put out i found out she had been put out she was living with another family that was had to pack up and leave so she brought all her stuff there and she said okay i'm gonna go to that church with them then i'm gonna get them to take me over and i'm gonna eat some food and i'm gonna get them that was her plan in the beginning but when it didn't work out quite like how she wanted to because when we when we pick you up that's when we're gonna drop you off at. right but she didn't like that pastor end up having to leave the service Take her to where she wanted to go. Right. And, um, you know, sometimes you just have to bind that spirit. You know, and that's why we always have to stay prayed up. And, um, you know, just going again, we have to, you know, let God lead us through the trials. Because mm -hmm. that was definitely a trial. Right. Yep. See, because we were picking, we picking up a lot of little people. And some of the moms, you get the kids, you know, parents will soon follow. Right. Right. So she wanted, because first I was like, what did y'all see that lady? Y'all see her outside? You know, I'm like, just really kind of like having that little bit of fear to go back over in there. But like you said, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if he destroy our mindset from going over there, picking up the ones that do want to come, you know, it's like they would have just messed up the whole thing. Somebody, you know, because I said, oh yeah, we moved here, we don't have a church. I'm looking for a church home. Right. And this was today. So if I hadn't went back over there, we would have missed out on that. We got more kids this time than right. we got the last time. Right. And, you know, again, he's trying to steal your passion 
for, for, for sowing good seed in these children and uh, raise up a child in the way they should go and they will not depart they will not be soon to depart from it so keep your passion and you know just keep allowing God to lead you and um, give you a spirit of discernment of where to and not to go you mm -hmm. know and um, he's going to lead us um, so sometimes you can just a question too I know this teaches so this is just a question it's fine with us going out like that and it's like when we first saw her she was all let me help y'all do that y'all bring y'all you know just really kind of all over the place and I must honestly say in my spirit I was like something not quite right with this lady that's what I was waiting on did you ever have a check in the spirit I did right and I was like well she asking people to come on the church and stuff so she fine but it's like still that Keep going. Yeah. Still that spirit. Something was like, something not quite right with her. Mm -hmm. But I just went on with the flow and just brought on. That goes to this next point. The Holy Spirit dwells in you and communicates the choice of your higher or better self. The God in you wants the best for you and knows the ripples of your choices ahead of you, whether good or bad. See, that was a ripple of a choice. You... The Holy Spirit gave you a check in your spirit before you made that decision. And your it was a struggle between your heart to do good versus God trying to say, hey, wait a minute. I had a similar situation. I did my morning read and I uh, it was uh, Deuteronomy 2 and... Deuteronomy 2 and 7 says, God will bless the work of your hands. And then before and after that, it pretty much says, you know, um, you can buy food from these folks. and um, But but none of their territory is yours. And usually when I read that, I mean, this is my personal relationship with God. Um, usually when I read that, it's like, be careful of who I entertain on a day like that. And um, <clears throat> I was finishing up a, a, a house so it can close uh, the following Monday. And this was over the weekend. And I had my daughter with me. And uh, I, you know, I um, hired a guy, you know, a day helper. Uh, I knew him, you know, we worked together in the past. And and I I, I thought, I said, well, does it mean, does it, is, is it applying to this guy? You know, and I was like, well, nah, you know, he was like, because when I called him, I got a you know different energy, you know whatever. So I was like, okay, maybe it doesn't apply to this guy. Mm -hmm. So, but I did have to check in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, I did question. You know, and um, long story short, uh, we I showed him. You know, I so said I need you. You know, because he he's primarily a painter. He loves to paint. So I'm like, okay, um, I need you to paint. Um, you know, uh, the wall with this color and the. Um, the trim with this color. So um, I told him three times. I even took pictures. I wrote on one bucket wall, the other bucket trim. I said, I'm going to put this paintbrush over here because it's already, you know, wet with the painting. It's just wrapped in the plastic. So you are, you can always use this, you know, make it easy for you. And he seemed a little off, you know, um, when we were riding together. He said, because one of the time instances we were talking, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Say what you said again. I'm sorry. I, I, I was kind of drifting off. And I'm like, okay. And um, then I'm just like, I'm like, are you okay? So anyway, I thought I had it down to a T, you know, where it was easy to discern, you know, which distinguish um, which color for what, you know, this, that, and the other. And um, he uh, called me and I was, it was, um, some condos so it was two of them we were prepping out i was starting on the second one and finishing up the first one mm -hmm. so uh he was you know doing a touch-up paint mm -hmm. in the first one mm -hmm. and um he ended up painting this door with some white paint and it was supposed to be a dark gray oh. and i'm like and he did half of it i'm like you should know that you know this is not the right color you know, it's too far, you know. Did he think it was, um, did he think it was gray? He, t he exclaimed that, you know, uh, he didn't know which color to use 
And I'm like, you've been using that on the wall. Why would you use that on the trim and the door? Because the door and the trim was all the same. So I was just like, why, you know, why would you, you know, why would you do that? And then, you know, he got to fussing and cussing about it. And I said, well, are you, you know, are you using drugs? You know, because, you know, he smelled like, he smoked a lot. He kept, he, he was like chain smoking cigarettes. And you see kind of spacey a little bit. Yeah, especially with the early coming, like, hold on, can you say this all over again? And then, you know, um, I start, you know, raising my voice. I'm like, because I'm like, you're not just going to talk to me like this. You know what I'm saying? I, I done picked you up, you know, you know, bought you lunch. And, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm like, I just say, you know what, either you're going to do it or not. You know, either you're going to do it or not. And I, I was, you know, I was through with it with that, you know. Um, so I'm walking away. And then, you know, he kind of run up behind me. He's like, you know, um, like, now nah, we can go in the back and we can handle this. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to fight you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to jail for you. You know, because I guess, you know, he got upset because I asked him, was he using drugs? And um, he, uh, you know, uh, it just it just kept escalating. So I, I went in the other house a lot, though. I mean, I had my, my seven-year-old daughter with me. And I'm just like... <laughs> I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not about to um, you know I'm not I'm not going to jail for you I mean, it's just bottom line I, I, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm done with this <laughs> you know um, so I locked the door and because um, I'm like if I fight you I'm gonna have to kill you because I gotta go home and I got time to be looking over my shoulder you know and I'm not I'm not going to jail for you and I can avoid this so you know I'm gonna do the best I can to avoid this and then I told him I'm gonna call the police you know because and then he. You know, he walked away and he started, you know, saying, well, you know, I need my money. I need my money. I'm like, how do you expect me to pay you when I got to come behind you? Nah, man, nah, man. You know, I said, okay. So, that was further, you know, I just said, you know what? So, had he did anything or he just did the trim? Well, he did some, you know, work, but it, was, it wasn't it was even two hours in. Oh, okay. You know, and it, we were supposed to, you know, at least be, you know, four to five hours of work. So, I paid him just to... You know, like you know, get them up. No, I paid them full amount. Cause I, I just said I, I don't want, I don't want no more time. This is your, this is my parting gift mm -hmm. <laughs> to you. Cause I, I'm, I'm just not, um, I'm, you know, I'm not giving you any reason to keep contesting me. You know, and my, my truck was in the other unit, and I'm just like, I ain't got, t I don't have time mm -hmm. for the foolishness. You know, so, so this is. Day, so at the end of the day. When God give you that little, mm -hmm. that little small voice and that little twinkling, and something just not quite right. Right, right, right. You and I know I'm getting over to, overboard with the story, to. right? You know, but I, but I did listen in terms of, you know, because when my daughter started getting upset and crying, the flesh in me was like, I'm gonna beat your tail, you know. And I'm, and I'm really finna, and I just said, you know what? It's not worth it because at the end of the day, I'm going after him at this point. Cause see, I'm locked in now. He messed up the truck. I got insurance. You know what I'm saying? He he ain't put his hands on me. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's threatened to, he ain't touched my daughter. Even you know, even though she's upset. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's physically being hurt. It's just words. So I just said, you know what? He go, you changed. You know, I'm through with it. He ended up walking off. You know, at that point, I was a bit upset. So I just said, let me go home. You know, his mom ended up calling me, and I'm listening, and I'm just like, okay. And, um, I, you know, it was through with it after that. So, anyway, um, but that, that just goes into, are we listening? You know, and, I, and, and and that was a part of me not listening to my higher self, but the grace of God saying, I got a backup plan for you to get out of this we situation. Yes. You know, and I just said, I'm a child of God. And I'm I'm going to, you know, allow that. I mean that that would, I mean a while before that I I got into a confrontation with a guy at the yard. You know I'm I'm doing the yard. He's a renter, and I'm doing the yard. And you know I told him I said you know I'm gonna weed eat this part right here. His car was right there. Some of the debris got on his wheels or whatever. And he got upset with that. You know, 20 minutes of conversation. I offered him a, a car wash. He still didn't want it. And I'm just sitting there listening, like, man, I'm, I'm, like, what do you want? What do you want? You know, like, 
what do you want? You cussing and fussing at me over, I offer you money to get your car washed. You say it ain't that serious. Well, it must be because I got to listen to you for the next 20. I can't even work. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I just I, I, I just put my arms behind my back and I just said, okay. I said, all right. And I, I just left it, left it alone. You know, I ain't have anything to say at that point. You know, um, but we all go through trials. And a lot of those trials are to show us, are we listening to God? Are we going to praise him through the trial? Are we going to lean to his understanding about the situation? Are we going to grow in ourself? You know, meaning it shows us our maturity, spiritually or mentally. You know, where are we? You know, sometimes you have to go through those life tests to see, you see how you reacted in there? You did good. You know, you, you got your promotion. And I've had, you know, other blessings that came in other areas that I know if I had reacted differently, this is my thinking, that I probably, you know, wouldn't have gotten some of those uh, opportunities if I had acted in a, in a childish state, you know, so... Uh, and I do think they relate. Um, I, I want to read. Um, I want to close out and read in Philippians three twelve through twenty one. Uh, hold on. All right. Um, Philippians three. This is the International Children's Bible. Uh, I, I picked this one because it's a very easy read. Um, continuing toward our goal. I do not mean that I am already as God wants me to be. I have not reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it and make it mine. Christ wants me to do that. That is the reason Christ made me his. Brothers, I know that I have not yet reached the goal, but there is one thing I always do. I forget things that are past. I try as hard as I can to reach the goal that is before me. I keep trying to reach the goal and get the prize. The prize is mine because God called me through Christ to the life above. Think of how many things that you've had to go through as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, wherever you are, you know, and, and think of the things that you are successful with, you know. Graduating high school, you know, um, learning how to do whatever that thing was that was kind of a challenge. Even learning, learning more about yourself, you know, recognizing, oh, I am like that, you know, and, and even letting God lead you with with that with that thing that you know that's not the greatest about you, and say, you know what, I'm going to improve in that area. I may not get it perfect, but I'm going to press forward to get better. And as long as I'm pressing forward to get better, I can be at peace with that. Because I see the improvement versus just standing stagnant where I was. And it and it, it's that constant relationship with God that I allow him to, you know, just have time. Sometimes you need to just talk, just talk like you like we talking right now. Just talk to God and let him say, Yeah, you did good with that. You know, and because I know <laughs> five years ago that wouldn't have, that situation wouldn't have went down like that. And I'm not bragging or anything like that. I just know where I came from, you know, especially my child right there. You know what I'm saying? She up there crying and I'm just like, but I said, you know what? That's just Satan doing everything he can to try to steal, kill and destroy my life. Go ahead. That go back to your first question when mm -hmm. you first started when you said, are we letting God lead us? Right. And that's a part of letting go and letting God. Amen. It's just like we, God, you know, he let us think before we react. You mm -hmm. know, I'm going through a situation now where I've been on my job almost three years. Mm -hmm. And they didn't pay me for my other, my first vacation because they said that I didn't get the paperwork in. Mm -hmm. But they knew I took it and they didn't tell me beforehand that I had to put some paperwork in. Right. So this time I took it, I did the, a whole month ahead of time, mm -hmm. put the paperwork in and everything, and they still did not pay me. And they said, oh, let me give you this first. Oh, you need to call, you know, just really give me the run around. Mm -hmm. They won't answer 
answer my call and nobody called me back. Used to be a time that I would have just been walked out the door and just quit. That's just it. Or, or even I would have just went up there and showed out. Y'all better give me my check and I quit. <laughs> but it's like I started thinking, but I got bills to pay. I said, oh, that's why y'all stay on y'all jobs. Because I used to just walk away. Right. You no, know, leave everything in my husband's hand. Just, well, I'm done with that job. My husband got two jobs. <laughs> 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 but now like I got credit cards, like I got car note. Oh no, I can't quit. You know, I just right. gotta find another way and just pray to God and make a way of an escape working out for me. Instead of me doing stuff. When we do stuff on our own, that's when we mess up when we leave God out. We right. mess it up and then we want God to fix it. Right, right, right. And you know, he can fix it. Yes. It's just are we gonna be patient enough to allow him to fix it? allow him to lead us in the fixing process and that kind of goes on with this last little part i'm still in um i'm picking up at verse 15 um i'm philippians 3 verse 15 all of us who have grown spiritually to be mature should think this way too notice that that maturity how are you thinking are you are, you know sometimes we get so stuck on what happened yesterday that we can't be present in right now. Sometimes people have rented so rent. Notice this rented so much space in our mind that we can't even have a genuine thought. Going back to some of the music we've listened to, some of the seeds planted in us by people who never cared for us, those hirelings, those thieves, those robbers, those destroyers, you know. Anybody who's told you that you are anything less than what God has for you, that's the thief, robber, and destroyer. Mm -hmm. Trying to take life from you. Because guess what? It is very difficult to hear from God if you're not content. Mm -hmm. If you're not at peace. If you don't recognize. And, and it took me a while to understand what the joy of the Lord meant. Because I thought joy meant happy. No, joy don't mean happy. Joy means I have hope in his word that things going to get better. I have some word that that, that that I can stand on that says, this is God's promise. This is my joy. I don't have to hear this thing ringing. You know, I'm not bragging anything, but I know I look good. I know I'm in shape. You know, I, I could if I wasn't married, I could probably pull whatever I wanted, you know. But as a child coming up, my sister told me I was ugly every day. And when I got in my 20s, she finally explained why. She said, well, you light skin and you look good. And I didn't want you to think you was all that because of something that hurt her by some light skin guy that thought he was all that and hurt her feelings. And I went through all high school with low self-esteem. I never dated the pretty girl that I really wanted to date because I thought I was too ugly. So I tried to do all this other stuff to make up for what I was lacking in because I didn't think I was attractive. And, I mean, it took me a while to get over that. And then people-pleasing was a major bondage to me because I, I didn't think I was attractive, you know? And I'm just like, wow. I was like, I think I look okay, you know? And I was always comparing myself to somebody else. And like, I'm not as I'm not as smart as that person. I'm not as attractive as that person. I'm not, I'm not, well, you know, I'm not as good. I'm not good enough. You know. And I, I had to I had to grow out of that. I had to leave that in the past. You know, even as it as it is tried to sneak up in, 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 in my thirties when I went through a divorce and I only saw what my mate at the time saw on me. And I said, I cannot, I had to come out of that. I said, I cannot define myself by that. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Leave yesterday and yesterday. If you could wake up another day, that's in the past. You can waste so much of your life, so much of your joy, so much of your, through being bitter. Yeah. Just through being bitter and mean because you bitter and reacting to certain people because they have triggered something. Yes. You know? That just made me think about, I have a friend that when we was in high school, you know, we was teased when we was younger. Mm -hmm. And we used to be like, oh, you know, we was like, oh, you know, the Sabrina and the Monster Squad. <laughs> and so it's like, 
and me as we got older after we graduated and stuff, all those guys that threw stuff at us and talked about us, they was like, I wanted to talk to you while you was in. It's like everybody wanted to, you know, then yeah. I was then I, I guess they was telling me that, oh you was fun and you was pretty and then everybody started then I was like, Oh mm, get away from me. Yeah. But I said that to say we saw one of the guys that who we went to school with that used to tease us and stuff. And I was like, that goes on. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, hug or whatever. She's like, I don't like him. I don't remember what he did to me when I was in the fourth grade. And here we are in our thirties, of twenties. High way in the third grade, you still mad at him not speaking to him because he pulled your pigtail in third grade. When he was a less mature being and probably had no clue of what the ripple of his choice was. I don't even remember that. So I, right. we let stuff hold us back. I could have been like, okay, remember they talked about me just really having really, um, and I still have some stuff going on with me even to this day. I'm not very sure of myself in a lot of things that I do. You know, like I don't know if I want to do that or either if I do some, how did I do? Did I do good? You know, it's like I want that from my hands. Affirmation. But I don't like do it with every, I probably do it with my kids, so I'm not sure. But I want that confirmation to tell me, oh, you did good, oh, that was good. Because I was always told negative stuff in my ear coming up, even from my mom and from different ones. So it's like, even now, I know God has taken me to another level, but sometimes I still have that insecurity, that little girl come out in me again. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you struggle with that, and that's what holds us back. Somebody, Something that somebody told us, unforgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, with un unforgiveness, it um, handicapped us, not the person who we won't forgive. Right. You know, they probably went on about their life, forgot about that even happening, and you still hold the grudge. Or didn't even recognize that that that, that 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 was received on your part, you know, the, to be a hurt, you know, they, you know, because I, I know some folks just teasing and joking help, help, you know, um, stab me, you know, uh, you know, verbally. So, I mean, I, I totally understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, just going back again, uh, verse 15, Philippians chapter 3, all of us who have grown spiritually to be mature should think this way too. And if there are things you do not agree with, God will make them clear to you. But we should continue following the truth we already have. Brothers, all of you should try to follow my example and to copy those who live the way we showed you. Many people live like enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you about them and it makes me cry to tell you about them and uh, about them now. The way we live is leading them, the way they live, I apologize, verse 19, the way they live is leading them to destruction. Instead of serving God, they do whatever their bodies want, letting their flesh rule. They do shameful things and they are proud of it. They think only about earthly things. But I, but our homeland is in heaven and we are waiting for our Savior, the Lord Jesus, to come from heaven. He will change our humble bodies and make them like he is, his own glorious body. Christ can do this by his power. With that power, he is able to rule all things. So I wanted to read all of that because we have to recognize, are we allowing that child in us to rule us or are we allowing Christ to rule us? The law of Christ is the law of love. Walk in love. Love God first. Love yourself second. Love your neighbor third. You can't love somebody else until you love yourself. And part of that loving of self is, I gotta let stuff go. I gotta let it roll off like 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 water off a duck. At the same time, though, recognize when somebody giving you constructive criticism and saying, "Hey, look, you got some toothpaste left on the side of your mouth." I'm not trying to, you know, be mean. I'm, you know, you finna go on a job interview. I'm trying to look out for you, you know. Or, hey, you know, that makes me not feel good when you do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it may be something, you know what I'm saying. That may be, it, it, depending on what the nature of it is, look at it for what it's worth, you know. And, and part of that walking, part of that, I mean, look at that twofold. The person is loving themselves enough to say, hey, I, I don't want to be treated like that. Mm -hmm. The person that is loving you enough to, to come at you in a respectful way and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to address this issue so it, so it doesn't, we don't have to continue this hurt. But at the same time, we have to look at, 
you know, you have to constantly evaluate situations for what they're worth. Now, you know the difference between somebody being petty versus somebody being constructive or trying to relate. You get what I'm saying? Right. Trying to be uh, 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 be in relationship with you. Be in harmony. You know, be at peace. And everything don't have to be a struggle just because we communicate. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you recognize stuff is 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 going left or not being productive, just find the pause button. You not hearing me? Mm-hmm. I'm. We wasting our Some, breath. Sometimes the truth hurts. <coughs> yes. Sometimes when people tell us to, um, sometimes when people tell us the truth, that hurts. We don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. Um, and it's not that they don't want to hear the truth. It's just that they don't want to hear the truth. Right. You know, because I was really thinking. You know, like when your kids are growing up. And it's like you don't scream at it across the room or whatever say when nobody you know say, you a little tangy up in the door and you use a little DR. Why are you talking about you know, it's like even as now, if you can say, oh, cuz, girl, you must been work you must work hard there, you little tangy. I'm not gonna get offended. You know what I'm saying? Because you trying to help me out. You right, I'm not trying to me. call you out. I'm saying it low. That's what I'm saying. Right. Look at but it in the context. Did, if, if I came in and I'm standing by you, wow, somebody must be in here. Now that's different. Now, <laughs> if, I can, if you do that and you know I'm standing right there next to you, that's calling me. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be mad at you. Right. Uh, uh, and he knows it's me that I'm standing next to him. And everybody's looking at me because I'm standing right there next to him. And he said, somebody must be looking at you. Why? Always say something. That I was messy? No, not just messy. You probably had like a... You know, I like me. I be telling you to get it. You know? <laughs> 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 hey, you know, I pay. Yeah. So, I pray that the seed of being conscious of you was planted in you tonight. Know what's in you. Know the God in you. And distinguish the child in you. Because a lot of times, like she said, the truth hurts. And God will reveal the truth to you often before somebody else does. But if you don't, if you keep ignoring what he's telling you, sometimes he'll use somebody else to interject and try and give you information. Never be so prideful or so big or so mighty that somebody can't tell you about yourself when they're trying to help you improve. A lot of times, we, everybody on this earth is flawed. That's why we do things to be better. That's why every company has, if they're a successful company, they have training classes. They, 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 they go to seminars where other people are doing such, such, such things that are successful. They go and learn there. And, and, and they send their best to, to the world's best and, 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 and try and get other thoughts and ideas because guess what God is speaking to everybody God I mean saved or not God is speaking to everybody when Jesus came to save the whole world he released the Holy Spirit so that everybody can hear whether you recognize it in him or whether you call it the Holy Spirit or not that's that's your business Mm -hmm. but he is speaking to everybody I know before I was saved my biggest the reason I got saved like for real saved was because I'm like God how I know you talking to me Versus, it's just me thinking, you know. And, and when I when I when I got that understanding, it was just like okay. And I still have to go through the checklist, you know. Is this the, 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 okay? I don't want to do it, so it must be God. Because I'm scared to do it, it must be God. You know, it's gonna require faith to do it, it must be God. It follows scripture, it must be God. You know, it's like yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, and I have to I have to kill that childishness. You know, because sometimes I mean, this this is just this is be for real. After you got out of the house and the Holy Spirit tell you to go back in the house for something, you don't really want to do it. I'm going to be late for work. <laughs> you know, think about 9-11. When so many people who just did not go to work that day. Yeah. You know, there were plenty of testimonies about that. Mm-hmm. You know, and then ones that, you know, had diversions that kept coming up. And, and, and then, you know, just to close out, today was a very trying day for me to get here. And I, you know, to be here on time. And, I mean, my friend's house got broke into, a dear friend of mine, you know. And I, I had to go, you know, see about him right before coming over here. Um, 
I was finishing out a house, you know, um, t to be sold, and the guys like, you know, trying to add all this stuff. I'm like, dude, this wasn't in the contract, but okay, you know, let me hurry up and get this. Let me get this out the way, you know. Um, and <laughs> he he left before you know paying me, and I'm just like, okay, I, I see your game, but okay, no worries. That that was to me in my eyes. That was a little bit of manipulation and massaging to get me over here so you can, you know, go out the door that way. And I'm like, okay, no no worries. I'm not worried about it. You know, um, I'm going to get paid. And, you know, things going to be okay even if I don't. You know, so, uh, and I just recognize, you know, the enemy wants to take away your, your voice, your voice. Everybody in here has a voice. He want to take away the God in you so you can be miserable and depressed and, and not doing, not enjoying life. Don't just exist. This is, this is, you're going to hear this from me every sermon. Don't just exist. Don't just suck and eat food and, and that's it. You got, everybody in here got a gift to the world. Everybody in here got something great in you. And you got to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah, let it shine. Let your light shine. God has gifted you with your gifts, with your beauty. Whether you chop, whether you chocolate or vanilla or somewhere in between, you have to recognize the beauty that you're gifted with. And there's always going to be a space for you. There's always going to be somebody for you. And even when you don't see anybody on the physical in the physical for you. Because there always is. Your parents, these, these two right here, they for you. Even when they get on your last nerves, they are for you. Jesus is for you. God is for you. The Holy Spirit is for you. It's always for you. Sometimes we are so caught up in our childishness that we can't recognize the beauty of those that are for us. Those prayers. Recognize just looking outside in these pretty days we've had. Enjoying these beautiful children that come around us. Don't allow your life to be stolen. Life is a precious gift. It is meant to be enjoyed. Enjoy it on purpose. Deuteronomy 30, 17 through 19. God said, choose life. And I'm going to tell you again. Choose life on purpose. That means you got to learn what life is. And the only way to know what life is, is to learn who gave it to you. Learn about God. Read that Bible. Read it. Yes, some of that Old Testament is as boring as it gets. And so-and-so begot so-and-so and so-and-so begot so-and-so. But all that is just trying to give you the bloodline of Jesus. That's all. That's all it is. It's giving you the history from Adam all the way up to Jesus. And showing you, even going through that, it shows you that there was a prostitute in Jesus' bloodline. There was a a a, 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 a woman um, who, who David uh, David was doing the peeping tom with and um, started letting Bathsheba, Bathsheba. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David and Bathsheba. Solomon was, a, and Solomon became it was a rich man that the world ever known. All this. It's in his blood like, and showing you that no matter how bad you think it is, God has a way of making it, make, giving you a way of escape. And if you trust him and if you repent, meaning change your mind about a situation. See, Jay, David, I mean, changed his mind about that situation. He said, you know what? I did wrong. You know, I did wrong. I recognize I did wrong. And look, and look at how God blessed him after that. You know, I mean, look at, look at the, the, the harlot that was... A whole city was being taken um, in, in um, Joshua, yeah, Rahab. Rahab, um, you know, uh, she said, well, hey, look, can you save my family? If I say, if I help y'all out, can you save my family? You know, I mean, she got blessed through that. So understand this. Once you save, and I'm going to close with this, you always saved. And the lowest you can get after being saved is the righteousness of God. Meaning you got access to kingdom principles. So no matter how bad you messed up. See, we can mess up with people. 
But we can't mess up with God. You can be disobedient and receive judgment. But God still love you. He said. Right. So your job is to learn about God and to show God. That's the law of Christ. Learn about him so you can show him. Work on your horizontal relationships. That's where we have to grow in. We all have to grow in. Don't get in bondage to people. Don't be a people pleaser. But at the same time, learn to walk in love. Sometimes walking in love means I can't give you a dollar. I can't help you because I'm hindering what God is trying to do for you. And sometimes walking in love means, yeah, it's making me uncomfortable. I've got to, I got to go out my way to do what God has put in my heart to do. Get rid of the child aside. So I thank you for your attention. I thank you for your sharing. I thank you for helping pull out of me what God used me for tonight. And I thank you all for allowing me to speak. And uh, may God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Good word, good word. Amen.